Hello and welcome to the Kent Teach webinar on how to write a good application. I'm Ashley, the campaign coordinator for Kent Teach. And I'm Jess, the Kent Teach manager. So this webinar, we're going to be giving you some advice and guidance on how to make your application stand out and be successful, whether that be for a school, college, nursery or any other sort of educational establishment. Now, here at Kent Teach, all of the roles within the education sector or anything to do with education are advertised on our site. So whether you're looking for a teaching role, a leadership role, something in support like finance or admin or a site staff member like a cleaner or a caretaker, all of the application forms are the same, so we're going to go through why that is, what they look like, and how to make your application stand out. Jess is going to start by talking about some of the fundamentals of a good application. Thanks, Ashley. So, there are six fundamentals to a good application. Now, number one is good grammar and good spelling. This is vital, regardless of which role you are in within a school. There's always going to be some form of written communication that you're going to have to take part in. So making sure that you're able to demonstrate that within your application is really important. Number two is remaining concise, regardless of which role you're applying to. It can be a challenge, but will you want to make sure that you are standing out in a concise way? Make sure you are sticking to the information that is relevant to the role you're applying for and to the person's specification instead of going off on a tangent. Think about what you're writing. Whilst you may enjoy certain hobbies, consider if they're relevant and how they can help you within the role that you're applying for. Next, we've got making sure your application is personalised to the school. It's really vital that you tailor your application to the school that you are applying for and show that you'd be a really good fit for their staff. While you're trying to make sure that you're selling yourself and applying to that school in the right way, You've also got to think about, well, is this the right school for me? As much as the school needs to find the right employee, it's the right. It's about what's right for you as well. Uh, the next point is about the full employment history. Now, this is something we're going to go into a bit more detail later, but the employment history is something that's quite comprehensive, um, and we're going to. The reason behind that is because it's a legal requirement of keeping children safe in education. So. Point five is um, having a strong personal statement, really making it specific to the school, showing exactly why you want to work there and why you would be the best person for the role. Making sure that you're really advocating your skills, your achievements and showing exactly your worth and what you could bring to the role. We're going to touch on this a little bit later on within this webinar. And last but not least, your key skills and achievements. Think about what skills you have, what achievements you've had in your past roles or in your personal life, and what the impact of these achievements and skills are. Think about how the school is going to benefit from you bringing your wealth of knowledge to them. So Jess is now going to talk a little bit about the employment history section of the application. So as we just touched on, on our um, six fundamentals, we Employment history it is a legal requirement. It's a legal requirement for anybody working within a school. As part of safer recruitment, candidates need to provide a full chronological employment history from when they left secondary school education. The reason this comprehensive employment history is needed is due to the requir requirements within keeping children safe in education that the schools have to follow as you're working in an environment with children. It doesn't matter which position you are holding within a school. For example, if you're a cleaner coming in before the children's lessons begin, it doesn't make you exempt from these checks as there's still a possibility that you could come into contact with a child even if it's not planned. Therefore, schools do have to follow these strict guidelines even within the application process. Now, gaps in your employment history, they're okay. Most people will have gaps at some point in their life, whether this be due to being just out of work, in between jobs, being ill, raising children. There's lots of reasons why you could have a gap in your employment history. And as I said, it's okay. Schools, employers, they're not here to judge. They just need to know where you've been to make sure that they are safeguarding their children. If you're uneasy about disclosing a period of absence, we suggest always being honest. For example, if you were off work for a little while due to an illness, but you're now ready to come back for work, you will need to disclose this gap in your employment. However, please do not fret. Everyone gets ill. It is a normal part of life. Writing that you were off work due to a period of illness, but you're now fit and healthy and ready to come back to work is more than acceptable. 
If you were unemployed, that is absolutely fine. Just state that you were unemployed at the time and give the specific dates and months and the years that you were unemployed between. Some people may have had a lot of short-term work and they're worried that it will look like they're job hopping. This isn't the case. And this is not something that employers are doing to catch you out. It's a legal requirement by the Department of Education, not a reflection of your character. Now, where the role involves engaging in regulated activity relevant to children, it is an offence to apply for the role if the applicant is barred from engaging in regulated activity relevant to children, as stated in the Safeguarding Vulnerable Groups Act 2006, Section 7. Now, you can see here that we've got two different employment histories. One which outlines the schools, the university and the periods that they were working at during various different academies across Kent. But as you can see, the one on the left, there's some gaps. Now, looking a little bit closer, these gaps naturally fall within the summer holidays. So it could have been a period of time where you were between jobs. As we stated before, that is absolutely fine. You do, however, need to state clearly this within the employment history section of your application. Now, on the right hand side, you can see that there's a gap between July 2013 and September 2013. It has been filled with travelling between secondary school and university, just so that period of time is not going to raise any alarm bells. However, if you don't disclose where you were during those times, this could lead to further questioning from the school or even the application not being considered moving forward, as it is then not considered in line with keeping children safe in education. Further down on the right hand side, you can see the longer period between August 2020 and September 2022 has been explained by saying that you were made redundant during COVID and became a carer for a relative. Now, if this was left blank, that is then a two year unexplained gap and it may give cause for employers to reject the application as you're not providing any information about what you did during those two years. Again, this process is not here to form a judgment of you. It is just ensuring that you are able to explain your whereabouts during periods of time to make sure there is nothing that's gonna raise concerns when you're working with children. So it is incredibly important to make sure there are no gaps in your employment history when submitting an application to work within an education establishment. I'm gonna hand back over to Ashley, who's gonna now talk you through your personal statement. Thank you for that information, Jess. So we're going to talk about your personal statement now. This is your opportunity to really show off and show what you can bring to the school and the role that you're applying for. Now, the main things we would suggest are that when you're writing your personal statement, you use the person specification associated with the job you're applying for to guide you on what you're going to include. Make sure your personal, personal statement is personalised to the school that you are applying for. If there are elements that you can research and that you can weave into your personal statement. It may go some way to show their motto, to show the values that the school have. It could help better your chance of moving on in the process. As well as stating some of the amazing things that you've done and, having, and showcasing your skills, it's really important to state the impact of these as well. Rather than just saying, oh, you know, these are the skills that I have, maybe try and give some real life examples to help evidence how your skills work in practice and prove that the work you did really had a significant impact either on the children or the school itself. We also think that you should try and show some passion for the role that you're applying for. Really think about what you're wanting to achieve from this position and show that you're committed to wanting to progress at that school. Now, as Jess mentioned earlier, it is important that applications are kept reasonably concise. Schools will have often 10 plus applications to read through. So make sure you're putting that impressive and relevant experience right at the front. And we'd recommend that your personal statement be no more than two sides of A4 for a teaching or a leadership role and around one side of A4 for a support role. You probably wouldn't want to write anything less than two paragraphs because otherwise you're going to be selling yourself short. Now, on the right hand side here, you can see that we've got um, a person specification for a teaching assistance role. The personal qualities are that the school is looking for. So we're thinking of ways that we can evidence this. So around the outside, you can see we've got some questions just to raise to yourself as you're reading through these personal specifications going, oh, well, how can I give an example of how I've managed change? Can I put any links with the research I've done through the school? Now, this evidence could come from 
a professional capacity from a previous job, or it can be from real life experience, from your personal life. Are you able to make those links with that school motto and show how you have embedded their values through any experience that you have had? Now, we've got an example down the bottom focusing on the quality of showing integrity, honesty and fairness. Now, not everybody's going to have experience working in schools. And this is an example as if someone has been working as a receptionist. They can show that they've demonstrated integrity, honesty by ensuring that they have respected their colleagues' privacy and maintaining that open line of communication when customers are requesting information. They're not providing any details unless they're being told to by their superiors. So that's maintaining the integrity of the company. But they're also showing that respect and fairness to the customer by trying to help them and get them the information that they need, explaining how they can move forward so that they can get closer to the outcome that they want. Now, it's completely OK if there are things on that list that you cannot do. As long as you're showing a willingness to learn, schools will be more than happy to help you develop, develop your skill set. However, we would say that if you feel that there is a majority of that list that is outside of your skill set, that you might want to consider looking at a, a different role because that might not be the best fit for you. It is incredibly rare that one individual is going to meet every single item on a person specification. So if there is one or two points that maybe you're thinking, oh, I don't really know how to do that yet, don't panic. So we're going to show you a little example next of something that you might want to include in a personal statement. So we're going to be focusing on the point of being encouraging and supportive in the development of others. So that's something that they've asked for from the person specification. We've got two colour coded sections here. One, the blue one, being the example of where you have encouraged and supported the development of others. And the red section being the impact that it's had. It's really important to evidence the impact. Now, it's all well and good saying I've done these things, but so what? Within education, there is a huge focus on that, so what? And that's what we call impact. So in the example on the screen, you can see the blue refers to the role where they have been a year leader. They've supported a fellow teacher by securing time, funding and training on a subject that they're really interested in developing. But then this has led to that member of staff who has requested that training becoming the IT coordinator, planning an effective curriculum for the whole school that is held in high regard across the local area. You then have their school curriculum being recognised with the quality computing mark and they now host borough wide training. And all this has stemmed from the fact that that year leader enab enabled them to have that time and have that money to receive that training. So not only is this person evidence that I have supported somebody, but they're thinking about the wide impact that it's had as well. So examples like this will make a really strong personal statement. So feel free to stop this video and have a little read through. And always think, well, what happened as a result of my skill, as a result of me doing this? How did it better the school? How did it better the children? How did it better the attainment and outcomes? Now, Jess is going to talk to you a little bit about transferable skills. OK, so um, almost at the last part of our webinar and we are going to be looking at transferable skills. Now, there are a whole range of different skills that people would benefit from having when working with children, regardless of what role you're applying for, whether that is working in the kitchen, whether that's being a member of site staff or cleaning. You are going to have periods of time when you are around children and being able to interact with them in and be sympathetic to their needs is really important. With this in mind, things like compassion and empathy are key transferable skills. Even if you're coming from having little experience of working with children and you're looking for a career change, maybe you're a parent yourself, you may have experiences and transferable skills that you might not realise really lend themselves to working in a school. Things like communication. Working in an education environment is incredibly busy and it is important that all members of staff are able to communicate with one another, with parents, with the children. Communication skills can, that you've picked up dealing with customers in another job or during, during group work at Sixth Form or University are key skills that you can bring in to your application and skills you could bring to a role. Similarly, with time management within schools, there are things that have to be done to a strict schedule. 
meaning that you will need to keep tightly to lesson times. Um, and there are very rigid parts of the day that cannot move. Things like lunch times, if there's a visitor coming into the school, home time, end of the day, those times cannot change. These have to be adhered to, otherwise it would have an impact on the rest of the school. So making sure that your time management can be demonstrated is really important. Now, the last one we have down there is creative thinking. With creative thinking, there are a lot of occasions within a school where in order to solve a problem or in order to resolve conflicts between two pupils, you might have to have some creative thinking. On the spot thinking is something that as a parent or in a job outside of education, you may have had to do as well. So it will be really fantastic transferable skill to highlight within your personal statement or within your application. There's a lot more transferable skills. It's always a good idea to make a list of all of the skills you think you have and the things you're good at. Then reflect on that personal, um, your personal statement and see, have I mentioned these skills? How would this help the role that I'm applying for? So that is the end of our um, webinar. We would like to thank you for, for attending, for listening, for downloading in whatever capacity you are watching this. We thank you. Um, we will be doing a live Q&A on this webinar, answering any questions you have about application writing on Thursday, the 18th of April at 6 p.m. This live will be on our Facebook page. It has been the banner that's going across the bottom of the screen throughout this webinar. Um, if you're unable to attend the live Q&A, please feel free to submit any questions um, in the survey after this webinar, in the comments section, um, message us directly on any of our social medias, and we will make sure that we answer them in the live. The live Q&A will then be saved and uploaded to all of our channels, so make sure to check back to get the answers to your questions. Thank you so much for joining us and we wish you the best of luck with all of your applications and we look forward to seeing you at our live Q&A.